Well, good evening, everybody. Praise the Lord. If this was a boat, we would all be tipping this side. <laughs> For those that the camera can't see it, but most people are sitting on this side. Uh, there's nothing wrong with this side, you know. Everything's wonderful. It's fine. Sit, where, sit wherever you want. <laughs> Your camera's shy. All right. You know, I had uh, since, really since last week, uh, I've had Nehemiah so much on my heart, and uh, and after Sunday service, you know, I ministered on Nehemiah chapter eight on Sunday about uh, about the joy of the Lord is our strength, and this there's a statement that that out of Jeremiah that has been on my heart. I just want to share with you as we begin, and then mention something as we begin tonight. But in Nehemiah chapter two. When Nehemiah goes before the king, Nehemiah, of course, was the hand of the Lord was upon him to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem that had been torn down. And God laid it upon his heart. The, the wall needs to be rebuilt. But he had to get permission from the king. And he says, then, he, then the king said to me, what are you requesting? This is to Nehemiah. So I prayed to the God of heaven. That was one of those short prayers. Lord, help me. <laughs> And I said to the king, if it pleases the king, and if your servant has found favor in your sight, that you send me to Judah, to the city of my father's graves, that I may rebuild it. And in the following verses, the Bible says that the Lord gave, or the, or the king, Artaxerxes, who was a heathen king, gave Nehemiah everything that was needed and the Bible says later on in that in, in verse 8 at the end of the verse and it says and Nehemiah writes he says and the king granted me what I had asked and he says this for the good hand of my God was upon me boy that's been, that's been in my spirit that statement the good hand of my God was upon I tell you, when the good hand of the Lord is upon you, anything's possible. Amen. I feel that. Praise the Lord. And uh, as you know, we've been we've been asking the Lord for the Lord to provide just a, a, a building, a place for us. And uh, there is, an, I'm just going to let you know this right. Now, there's a building that's going up for auction, uh, April 10th, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna try our best. Right? We're going to try our best. But let me say this. We need the good hand of the Lord. Amen. We need the good hand of the Lord. And I, I just, I believe we got it. I believe that we have his good hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we stand to our feet tonight as we begin to worship the Lord? Can we just worship him right now in our own way? Thank you, Lord. Oh, we need you, Jesus. We need your Holy Spirit. Your favor. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Can you just cry out to the Lord right now? Ask Him. Lord, we need your help. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you for your good hand that's upon us. We believe in God. We believe you for miracles, oh Lord, in every way in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, grant us our request, oh God. Let miracles be done. Lord, let your will, let your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way tonight in this service. We give you praise and we give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, every need of our heart, Lord, every single person here, Lord, all the needs of our heart, we ask you to meet the needs of our heart tonight. Thank you, Lord, spirit, soul, and body. This is your service, Jesus. Have your way. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Lord, I want more of you. Living water rain down on me. Yes. Lord, I need more of you. Living breath of life come from me. Yes. Sing that once again. Lord, I want more of you. 
presence of the Lord on Tuesday evening, Sunday morning, Monday afternoon, Wednesday we of the hour or we hours of the morning, Thursday, Friday, all days. Hope I didn't leave one out because I need him every hour. Every hour I need thee. Oh, we need him. Whether we recognize it or not, we are desperate for him. Whether, whether we recognize it or not, we need him every hour, every breath, every moment, every hour I need thee. You know, if we could just go back and pick up that one more time for just a minute, and I'll, and I'll hush, get out of the way. We want him to have his way. Amen. He's going to do it. together but I'm thankful that he is with us when we gather together thankful that he's with us in our vehicles. I know I say it every week but it's the truth uh, whether our home vehicles in a place of business doesn't matter where we are he's right there with us oh, I'm so grateful we don't have to look all cute <laughs> before we put the makeup on in the morning ladies he's with us <laughs> with us. He woke up with us. Before you put those size 11s over the bed, gentlemen, or 9 and 10s or 12s or 15s, he was with you. He's with you because he loves us and he knows every hour I need thee. Every hour I need you. Thank the Lord. Tonight, you know, we're going to, uh, well, we're doing things just a little bit differently tonight. Uh, and we're thankful for that. But if I could get uh, the the Roy brothers, <laughs> father and son, uh, we're going to go ahead and take up the night. But we're thankful, thankful for the the Roy family, Roy brothers taking up the offering, and all the Roys. But. We're thankful for each and every one of you tonight. Thankful for what uh, the Lord puts on your heart to give. Know this tonight, that every, every penny that comes in goes right back to Him. Goes right back to Him and goes for souls. From His heart and His hand. His heart and His hand. I, I know you know, but uh, I believe I can look at each and every one of us tonight. And your heart is for souls. Because your heart is for Him. And his heart is for others to know him. Just as it was for you to know him before you knew him. And now that you do know him, man, what a privilege we get that others might know him too. Uh, just take me home, Lord, if I, can't, if I can't see somebody else come. Just take me home. It's a, it's a wonder he leaves us here, you know, so that our neighbors can get ready to go. So that your neighbor can get ready to go. Nothing else we're going to take with us but our neighbors. And
and our loved ones. I, I am going to hush. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight. Lord, I'm asking you to bless the giver. Bless the gift, Lord. Bless everything that you, you want it to go to. I believe it in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you're going to multiply just as you did with the fish and the loaves. Lord, that some would even be left over. And Lord, I thank you for it tonight in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen and amen. Praise God. Thank you. But he is. Thank the Lord. Well, we have a special treat for you tonight. Uh, not more of... <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, we are thankful to have Tristan uh, Hoffman and his beautiful wife, Caitlin, visiting with us tonight. They were in here for the last few days. So grateful for them. So thankful for what the Lord is doing in their hearts and lives. Uh, we met them initially. Well, met Tristan initially before... Uh, before we got to meet his better half, uh, Caitlin, and we love Tristan both, so I can tease him. Uh, but we met them at uh, World Evangelism Bible College there in Baton Rouge. He and Sam were uh, sweet mates, or at least at least sweet mates, maybe roommates, uh, roommates even. How about that? Uh, and they're still friends. Thank the Lord, uh, best of friends, and we praise God. He is going to come and minister for us tonight. Why don't you give a big clap uh, for the hand of the Lord in his life tonight? Thank the Lord. Well, it's good to be here tonight, and uh, I want to thank you all for even allowing me to do this. It's a great honor. Um, if you would turn with me to Acts 1-8. Okay. <clears throat> So it says, But ye shall receive power, after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Um, there's a lot in that scripture. <laughs> but um, what we're going to be talking about tonight is who is the Holy Spirit? So who is he? What does he do? So if you would bow your heads as we pray tonight. God, thank you, Lord, for allowing us to come together tonight. Lord, I just pray that you would touch my mouth, Lord, that you would speak through me, Lord, to speak your, speak your word to these people. Lord, I pray that you would just help us tonight, Lord. Open the ears to hear and hearts to receive your word, Lord. I pray that you touch me in Jesus' name. Amen. So, before we get into power that's in that verse. Um, we're going to look at, so who is he? Before the power, what does he do? What is his purpose and who is he? So one, as you can find in the story of the three Hebrew children or that you can find in Asher when Moses blesses the tribe of Asher and that is filled with oil. You can, he is a consumer. He is one that will consume your life and make you live in, live in abundance because of his hand upon you, because of his work in your life. So he will consume you. He will wrap you up in his fire. And the, and the three Hebrew children, they were thrown into the worldly fire, but because they were consumed by the Holy Spirit fire, the world couldn't touch them. Because God's hand was on him. So, going from there, he's, he's a consumer. So, now we're looking at the pillar of fire. He's, he's found in um, 
when they're going through the wilderness. There's a pillar, pillar of fire that leads them, that guides them. The Holy Spirit in your life is a guide. He guides you. Day by day, you wake up and you place your faith in Jesus and what He did and what He accomplished at the cross of Calvary. And then there's a guide that steps in and says, all right, we're taking on today. We're going to walk today. We're going to go through this day together. He's a help. He's a... When I'm weak, He is strong. When I am... I can't talk. I can't do anything. I can't... All I can get out is a groan when I praise Him, when I speak to Him, when I pray to the Father. And all I can get out is... Ah, God, I don't... I don't say I'm I'm just here that's I need you and that's all I got he's a help he's a God then he's a conqueror as found in when Elijah faces the 400 prophets of Baal when they're all coming against him and saying oh well you know that this God that you have he's not anything this Baal this golden calf is is God and Elijah says, okay, if he's God, let him answer by fire. And whoever answers by fire, representing the Holy Spirit, that is who shall be God. So, these, all four of these, they, they all come right at salvation. Right at salvation, you've got automatically, this is... You've put your faith in Jesus and you've checked off every box. You've initialed everywhere. You've signed the paper. And it is saying you've got the consumer in your life. You've got a help. You've got a God. And you've got a conqueror if you will allow him to be a conqueror in your life. And the fifth thing that I want to cover tonight is that verse in Acts. And that's the power that comes with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So, that power and that Acts experience. And notice that whenever you look through, you can go through all these um, stories that I've talked about. And the one thing that comes out of them, that every time a fire is spoken of, representing the Holy Spirit... That right after souls are saved, there's souls added unto the kingdom. And the same thing goes for Acts. Immediately, right after, 3,000 souls added to the kingdom. Three days later, 5,000 souls added to the kingdom. And if that's not what our hearts, or as Sharon said earlier, we got some heart checking to do. Our hearts should beat for the A lot, um, I guess I can't say a lot, but some people in the the church in throughout the world think that once you have been baptized into the Holy Spirit, you've either arrived or that's the first time that he's ever been in your life. So I think you've... That's it. You're perfect. But those same people will be at the restaurants right after service. They're speaking in tongues in service and then cussing the waitress out. At <laughs> so with blessings and cursings, they don't come out of the same mouth. So, and the Holy Spirit, as I've talked about that fire, He is a refining fire. As it talks about in Peter's or chapter 1 and verse 7. I don't know if she'll have it up, but it says that the trial of your faith being much more more or much more precious than of gold that perish though it though it be tried with fire might it might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. So he is a refining fire. I'm sure you've heard it from somebody else too, but your your faith 
in Christ as, a, as of gold that's not perfect yet. Whenever the refiner comes, the refining fire comes, gets to a certain temperature, and imperfections start coming out. And then the refiner has to scoop out those imperfections. And then it gets turned up a little bit more. So this in our walk with Christ is trials and tribulations. We start out right when we get saved and it feels like, whoa, the devil's really then we start seeing, well, that changed. I'm not, I'm not cussing like I was, or I'm not gossiping like I was. I'm not just anything that has separated you or made you more like the world. I'm not doing that anymore. Man, I haven't gotten mad in so long. Just out of nowhere. I haven't done that. The refiner comes. He starts taking those things out. And then it, that, that too much, but <laughs> we go on. And, and if we continue and let our faith be tried, we can slowly, little by little, precept upon precept, we can allow God to start changing our life, start taking out imperfections. So, his purpose, the Holy Spirit's purpose, is to change us, change us into a mere image of Jesus Christ. He's slowly working on us, taking, making that looking mirror, and trying to get out the get out the bad stuff to make us look like and reflect the sun. So his that's his that's his purpose. And the Holy Spirit will point you to Jesus and glorify Jesus and try to make you look more like Jesus while Jesus points you to the Father. And you'll find this all throughout Scripture. Um so as I said before, you at salvation, you perceive him as a consumer, a guide, a help, and a conqueror. Then, after you have received him as those things, it's his job to then take you into deeper waters. So, when we get saved, we're, or when we're not saved, we're kind of standing on the banks. Somebody's witnessing to us, and we're kind of looking at the water like, that's pretty dark. <laughs> I don't know if I want to get in there. We're kind of standing at the banks. We get saved. Man, I'm in the water. Ankle deep. And automatically, as I said, the Holy Spirit rushes in. Alright, where, where are we going now? We're, we got this to take care of? Alright, let's do it. So, we start off ankle deep water. And then His sole purpose is to start taking you into deeper waters. Just as a child learning how to swim, you start them off on the steps. And they'll kind of get down and up. Nope, I'm done. <laughs> and they'll kind of get down a little bit farther. So, a lot of times, you know, we, or sometimes we, we become satisfied or grown cold with or just okay with being in that ankle deep water or you know if if you've been baptized in the holy spirit maybe you're satisfied with just knee deep water you're satisfied well I'm I'm deeper than I was look at me now I'm I'm deeper I'm deeper into the god's God's promises to us, really. I mean, that's a promise of God. He says, you will receive the Holy Spirit. So, some people, as I said before, kind of think you've, you've arrived 
when you've hit baptism of the Holy Spirit, but that's just knee-deep water. You go from that to he starts working on more things. Power of service, that's really what it is. It's a power of service. It's where I can... It gives you more boldness. I promise you, if I was not baptized in the Holy Spirit, I don't think I could be up here. (laughs) But it gives you that boldness. It gives you... When you're walking in Walmart and somebody... God says, hey, go, go talk to that person. Just say Jesus loves you. It gives you that boldness to step out and say, hey, I don't know what's going on, but Jesus loves you. So, and that, as we've seen, will go a long way. So, like I've been saying, the Holy Spirit is much more, so much more than a shout or tongues. And so much of the church has limited him limited him to that he's they've put him in a box so i what i'm trying to get at is i want you to understand who he is not just what he does whenever you i mean the same thing goes for the father and jesus whenever you understand who they are you can understand more about them instead of just saying well i know it can heal I know He can save. I know He can deliver. But do you know Him? Do you know Him? And it's not just Sunday school lessons where, well, I know, you know, back in Sunday school, I found out that somebody got swallowed by a whale, and (laughs) and, uh, that's what I know about Jesus. Um, But it's a do you know Him? He's literally the only way that we can walk this Christian life. Whenever the Holy Spirit, like I said, He steps in at salvation, He becomes a complete guide. Someone that can change your thoughts. He can He can help you through a situation that you never thought you was going to get through. And that's a testimony in itself. But... I mean, sometimes he's the only way I can go to Walmart without trying to push a cart into somebody. Get my way. But but if you, like, we've gone through this, and I I just want you to see who he is. Because if we begin to know who he is, then we begin to want to know more and more and more. And that's, that more, if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit, that's a more. God has more for you. There's more than just, I mean, that's a lot being a help God consumer and conqueror. There's power that you receive at that. At that being baptized in the Holy Spirit. So, I'm closing, so if Sam, if you would come, it's been short, but I just want you to see who he is, and just wanted to talk about that, so whenever we begin to say, as he sang earlier there's nothing else, Lord there's nothing else that I want but more of you, I just need you, I just need you well that next step, if you maybe you, you're not saved, or maybe you're seeking the baptism of the Holy Spirit. There's a more and it's promised to you. It's not a maybe it'll come. Jesus said repent, be baptized and it will. You shall receive the Holy Spirit. So, not I want to I want to make an altar call of if you haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit and you've been seeking it or if you hear me now and you say man I, I want that power I want I want Holy, the Holy Spirit to guide me in ways that it hasn't before I, I want to invite you to, you can stand across the front if you just want
want more of God. I want more. If you've been seeking or you just want to find out tonight, I'd, if y'all would come as he's praying.
individually, as a church, collectively. And I thank the Lord for it. We need the power. We need the help of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> and everything that we do. <laughs> and everything that we do. I thank God for the for the tongues that comes with the baptism with the Holy Spirit. You might have heard me say it before. You know, it, it, you don't you don't buy a pair of shoes for the tongues, but the, the tongues come with it. Baptism with the Holy Spirit, the tongues come with it. But it is a, it is a tremendous blessing, though. People look at it as weird sometimes. I can't figure it out. Well, if you, we could figure it out, it wouldn't be God. Right? If we could just figure it out, it wouldn't be the Holy Spirit. But thank God He gives us something that's beyond us. <laughs> I just encourage you, for those of you that still have, you know, feel like you've received yet, I encourage you that when you pray, when you pray, the Bible says they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. That word utterance means the sound of words, it means even like a syllable, the sound of words. And I'm not telling you, nobody's telling you what to say, but you're going to see, you'll fear, you'll hear, you'll sense a sound in your spirit. I wrestled, I wrestled with that myself when I initially was praying, was asking God for the baptism of the Spirit. One time I was praying and I felt like it was right there. I thought, that must be me. And I didn't say anything. And nothing happened. It was several months later, several months later at a church service not even the, the message wasn't even about the baptism with the Holy Spirit I just went forward but the Lord knew my heart I was looking and the Lord knows your heart and this man just laid his hand in the back of my head and said Father fill him with the Holy Spirit this man didn't even know who I was and the Lord filled me and I had learned from several months earlier hey that was the Lord and it just, I just spoke it, and it, and it, and the, and that, that power of the Holy Spirit flow uh, began to flow. I just encourage you. That's my story. I encourage you. I encourage you. That sound, that's the Lord. You can be at home. You can be anywhere. Just speak it, and it will say. It won't sound. It won't sound like you. It won't. I mean, I'm not talking. It will. It will be you, but it won't sound like your own language be a language the Holy Spirit's given you praise the Lord amen praise the Lord I don't want this service to end amen <laughs> praise the Lord hallelujah we just sing that again I want more praise the Lord thank you Lord go ahead and worship the Lord thank you Lord go ahead thank you Lord
is here and he loves us tonight the service was he just he comes down in his presence he, he comes to bless he's a blessing God praise the Lord he absolutely loves us and cares for us man from head to toe he loves us all of our inconsistencies everything he just loves us he cares for us praise the Lord amen I just encourage you as we um, come to and then you can stay as long as you want to in prayer if you want to I'm going to ask Sam to keep on playing for a while um, I want to mention this so something that happened during service I found out actually during service um, a good friend of ours uh, Scott Corbin and his wife posted on Facebook so it's public we, Sharon and I, we ministered for him several times in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and uh, he was in the hospital for uh, some time and dealing with some issues. Well, he, he passed away tonight, and uh, he's a tremendous brother. He's a pastor of a church, a pastor of a church that passed away. So he's got a wife and five children. So... Can we pray for the Corbin family tonight? Her, her name is Nikki. I don't know all the five children's name, but five children. Can we pray for the Corbin family, Nikki and the five children? Let's pray for them right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, that you're the God of all comfort. And Lord, we lift up, Lord Nikki, and we lift up the kids and lift up this whole family we lift up that church family oh god in spartanburg and lord we pray lord for their comfort and for their strength in the name of jesus as their hearts are broken right now we ask that lord your presence oh god would just be there and lord your help you are the helper you gave us the holy spirit as a for as a comforter and we ask that lord you would help and comfort the Corbin family tonight, right now even, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And in the days to come, we ask you, Lord, for your help, your provision. Bring people into their path, O oh Lord, right that they're in that area that can help them. In the name of Jesus, everything would just line up as it needs to. Lord, help them, help that church. Strengthen them, O oh God. Comfort Nikki and the children, Lord, especially. Comfort them, oh God. We grieve with those who grieve. And Lord, we grieve tonight with them. Asking you, Lord, for your strength and your help in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, it's just an awesome thing that you don't... Maybe you, most of you would not know the Corbin family, uh, but it's an awesome thing as children of God, being in the family of God, that we can pray for them. Here we are in Murphy, praying to God, and he can, boom, just like that, he can help them because that's the way God is. He's God, we're, and he's not limited by time and by space. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Let's sing it one more time. <laughs> if you want to leave, you can leave. If you don't, you can stay.
sister.